I'll do. No coit today. For those of you who speak Queen's English, that's coat. I've said that before. Our lass had a bit of a go about me vlog. She says I look like a tramp. A bit scruffy. My coit's gone. She says she's thrown it out. I don't know whether she has or not. If you'd like to see me and our lass in the van doing a question and answer, what's it like living with a prison officer? In the comments, guys. Got a bit of a bollocking as well. From Lee. Lee the tech guy. <laughs> he bollocked me for giving shout outs at the front of the video. People don't want to hear me giving shout outs. Do them at the end, they can switch off. I'll take you on board, Lee. Two shout outs today. <laughs> First one, I got a message. Um, I think it was supposed to be quite insulting. It started something like Sam with you dirty nonce. Suggests I'm a paedophile. Um, the second part said the reason you don't sleep is that you're up all night penning scripts. Um, scripts is a letter in prison. You know, if you're going to pen a script, you're going to write a script. So it made me smile that this guy suggests I'm up all night. Today's vlog, writing it for today. Obviously, part of writing it is learning it. Yeah, which I probably do over breakfast time. And then, and then I'm out now telling you about that script. That was a good one. And again, sorry Lee, one more. Liz, yeah? How do? How do everyone? How do Liz? Who's Liz? Liz is the partner of Cassidy who I met yesterday, a subscriber. Yeah? Second time I met a subscriber, pulled over in his lovely car, had a chat. Um, when Boris gives his head a wobble, Prime Minister that is guys and the country's open uh, we'll meet up Cassidy and have a pint Liz you can come with him if you want and I'll bring our lass cheers guys okay today's video gonna go back to where it all started Forest Bank Forest Bank prison it's not about Forest Bank this it's about young offenders yeah YOs, uh, YPs, young persons, whatever you want to call them. 18 to 21 year olds. So my first placement at Forest Bank was on B1. We had B1, B2, remand young offenders, upstairs B2, the good lads enhanced. Yeah, and they were good, well behaved. I didn't work up there much. But it was an enjoyable place to work. B1 was also an enjoyable place to work. Shout out to A1 and A2. They were sentenced young offenders. Did a few shifts on there. Met some interesting characters too. So B1. Capacity at Wings at that time at Forest Bank was 86. The lowest we ever got down to was about 60. At most, maybe 75. Upstairs, B2, there was space. So we would send people upstairs. Kept the population reasonably low compared to other wings. However, you know, it was... Uh, what's a good word to use? It was bouncing. Bouncing all the time. You know, maybe like a rave. It had an atmosphere, a vibe. I would say, in my time at Strange Ways, I came across, I don't know, maybe 30 or 40 of those lads who were starting out their careers in prison. A uh, couple of dozen on the Cat A's. And I've had a lot of messages quite recently from ex-young offenders, which is nice. You know, some of them on the straight and narrow now which is nice to know so let's start shall we with the playboys of the wing Jared, Will Reese, Big Bear, Ricky the other lad, I always forget his name 
six of them. They were armed robbers. So the rest of the lads that were on the wing, twocking, taking without consent, that's robbing cars, minor robberies, minor drug related offences, that sort of thing. These lads were the playboys of the wing, yeah? Six of them, long conversations, got to know them really well. Will was on his second sentence at 18, he was the youngest, or maybe Ricky was equally as young. I think he did his first sentence at 13 for armed robbery, something like that. The chats, you know, I'd ask them questions, robberies and stuff like that. They're thinking outside the box, these guys. They're not doing banks at Presswich and in town centres. Using the noggins, you know, hitting places out of town, quiet places, places difficult for police to get to. But obviously, they're all in prison now. So they have been caught. These lads have pictures on the walls. I think Reese had, I'm not a car guy, I'm a motorbike guy, Carrera 4, Subarus, Evos. These guys owned them, yeah? Lots of pictures, bikes, Yamaha, R, R6s, sport bikes, things like this. Lots of young offenders. And prisoners in prison have photographs on the walls of cars and motorbikes, yeah? A lot of them don't own them. Pictures of other people's, they put them on the walls as though they're their own. There you go. The other guys all looked up to him. In the cell, again guys, come on. I was getting on a bit when I was at Forest Bank, I was in my 40s. In the cell, five, six pairs a night, one ten, something like that. Playboys they were. Lots of lads on that wing. Went on to emulate these guys, these six guys, and become armed robbers. Sadly. Um, lots of other guys in there. There were guys in there, actually, very sadly, who would later try to kill each other because of um, gang-related issues. When I'm subject to gangs, when I come to Manchester, you know, I'm at Forest Bank, People are on about Doddington and Gooch, yeah? Yorkshiremen, I were clueless. I didn't even know what they were saying properly. I certainly didn't know how to spell them. It's only when I went on an escort through Moss Side, and someone pointed out, you know, a road, cul-de-sac, avenue, Gooch, Doddington. They were names of roads, these gang names. You know, you're born on one side at road, you gooch, you're born on other, you're Doddington. Two separate gangs. Yeah? The parents probably went to church together. Gang members, predominantly black. There were guys in there, Gooch and Doddington, who were padded up together, best mates. Later go on, like I say, try and kill each other. And some did. You know? There was probably three or four lads on them wings, I remember well. I didn't know the backgrounds who were now dead shot you know in Salford in a petrol station this sort of thing really really tragic really remember Bailey big lad yeah saw him at strange ways not long before I left excuse me guys just let me uh, not long before I left um, big lad Always remember him on basic regime. And I got on with these lads. I got on with these lads when I saw them at Strange Ways. Just found it sad that they've all sort of gone on to become career criminals. I'm going to tell you a couple of gang stories. Um, at some point, I will do a, a vlog. If you're not from Manchester, again, you might not be aware. Um, these two gangs, Doddington and Gooch. Gooch, massive trial. We had... Um, around seven people who were involved in that trial on K-Wing some, somewhere around 2005, 2007 um, so two stories not gang related as such as in gang members well one of them is 
So a lad, I turns up for a night shift. I was asked to do a night shift. I was on a day off. Came into the healthcare when I was working there. At that time, we had the constant watch cell outside the main office. So I came in. There's nobody sat at the constant watch. So I went in the office. I said, you know, what, what's going on? You're here in case the nurses need to go in, I was told. Um, He's not exactly on a constant watch. He'd been brought into custody by the police. Um, you all right, mate? Been brought into custody by the police for his own protection. Any of you lads who've been to prison who might have heard of this thing before, you know, and there's plenty of you, tell me in the comments. I can't get my head round the fact that the police had brought him to us for the weekend. We'd got him on healthcare. He was on healthcare because the healthcare building He's in the middle of the prison, yeah? So nobody would possibly know he was there, but also his condition. Again, I don't know why he weren't in hospital. Um, I never got my head around that. You all right, how you doing? Do you want to be on YouTube? <laughs> Vlogging. Yeah. Take it easy. Um, yeah, so I, I never got my head around that, why he was actually there. So I get to chatting to himself, sits down. Again, he's not on a constant watch because he's at risk of harming himself. I'm there to open the door um, if the nurses need to get in. Wow, because this kid banged up. So he's from Withenshaw. Some of you will definitely know this. He had um, a gang tattoo on his arm that other gang members had tried to remove with a knife. Um, being stabbed, beaten with baseball bats, at some point he had a gunshot. Um, he was in a pretty bad state really. Um, I think a couple of times in the nights, nurses went in, just to have a look at his wounds and stuff like that. So if you've ever heard of that guys, you know, or prison officers maybe, like I said, he was there two days and he was gone. But when I got chatting, he decided that it was time to move on. He was in his early 20s, his missus was due to have a baby and you know she gave him the ultimatum it's me or the gang he chose her and very nearly paid the ultimate price so there you go second one uh very very sad this i did briefly touch on this in my book um okay so there's a young lad somewhere in moss side 21 years old, he's working, uh, he's got a young lady, got a young child, he's in a shop somewhere, McDonald's or whatever, he's mistakenly took by some gang members for a member of the opposition, Gooch, Donington, whichever. They entered the building where they were, like I said, shop McDonald's. Uh, he got a good kick in. He, uh, he took a good few hits to his head with a baseball bat and he suffered brain damage. I've talked about this before. When you get brain damage, guys, you can become disinhibited. Stroke victims, um, you know, there's, there's some diseases out there, I've talked about Huntington's career, a couple of lads that came across in prison, should have never been in prison. Um, disinhibited, you know, you, you don't, basically you don't know right from wrong. Anyway, this lad is at a party, he gets into bed with a friend's girlfriend, there are accusations of a sexual nature, um, and he's in prison. You know, I, I don't know about the accusations. I don't know what happened. All I know is we've got a young lad in prison. He was a lump, yeah? About my eye, heavy lad, and he was childlike. When he first came in, a lot of the female staff we had on healthcare used to deal with him. Um, I'm gonna walk, guys. It's absolutely perishing. So, Amy, if you see this, where's my coit, yeah? Where is my coit? Hey up. Nearly had a Benny Hill moment then, Lee. 
So, yeah, they used to tell him off. He didn't want to shower, he didn't want to look after himself. He was problematic in that he was childlike, but he was a big lad. Yeah? Um, another problem was that he told everyone he was in for rape. Not that he committed rape, but he was in for rape. On the healthcare, those of you who might be new to the channel, we had vulnerable prisoners, sex offenders, and normal location prisoners together. Nowhere in prison rules does it say we can have them together. It was managed well, small number of staff, never any incident, never. While well, I worked on there. Very childlike. Anyway, he'd been with us a while, awaiting a uh, place in a brain unit. Yeah? One minute, guys. At some point, his behaviour became that challenging. He was placed on an unlock protocol. Again, that means a certain number of staff have to be there and he's not out with other prisoners. He was placed on a three officer unlock. Only ever had two, most of the time on healthcare. I went off annual leave for about a week, came back, he'd been locked up, not out of his cell much, smashed his TV, his mental health had deteriorated. He's already got brain damage, guys. Now I'm talking about his mental health. Weren't well. In a really bad place, in fact. So this is just before he got taken to this brain unit, specialist unit. In his final days, I tried to have conversations with him. Uh, one of the orderlies, cleaners, Jay, spent a lot of time at his cell trying to talk to him. So he's had brain damage, yeah? He's got no TV, nothing in his cell. Smashed his cell up and he's become mentally unwell and he's not getting out much. You can see where this is going. Like I say, last couple of days, gave him his canteen. You know, he had pop, uh, noodles, cereals, that sort of thing. He ended up flooding his cell Filled this toilet full of stuff. Um, he was still using his toilet. Again, you know what I'm saying. His floor, floor of his cell, inch of water, noodles, wheat bix pop, coffee. Taking his cup, prison cup, drinking off the floor. You know, all this stuff that was down there. It stank his cell. Um, we actually took him out one day, cleaned his cell up, tried to get him in the shower, it weren't gonna happen. It just ended up in restraint. Put him back in the same cell, still no TV. Blocked his toilet again. Probably his last day in strange ways. Stood talking to him. One of them car crash moments, guys, yeah? I stood at his cell. We had a little hatch that he could drop down. So I'm looking at him. He's looking through me. He's gone. Um, KK, my manager's walked past. I've said he's not well. So the world's going on around me, yeah? It was in the morning. There's staff in the office, people walking past. Could be quite a busy time on a healthcare in the morning. Other prisoners. This lad has got um, his prison cup. Taking water out of the toilet, his toilet is full of everything, including excrement. Um, he's got a Quran in the sink. This isn't anything religious at all, this. He's just mulching it up. Big gobs full of... I remember, you know, balking me. I've got a strong stomach. Um, I've seen plenty of stuff. But I was almost gagging, watching him. Dirty water. Big handfuls of wet paper. Jay, one of the orderlies, later told me, you know, got a Bible in there as well and everything else. The Iman had bought him the Quran. Um, I don't know what he was doing. Uh, 
I just remember watching him and I, I remember going in the office and telling him, have you seen this guy? You know, he, he's got a Quran in the sink, he's eating it, dirty water. And it's not that people didn't care, it was just like, well, he's going he's gonna to a brain unit tomorrow, you know. Spent quite a bit of time that shift that day, as did Jay, I would later find out. You know, just, just trying to talk to him. Um, truly sad. So, went to a brain injury unit. They had to get kitted up in PPE. Uh, I think they got, they got some lads in the actual tornado riot gear. Um, the guy who was teching him, uh, Scouse PO, officer, senior officer, principal officer. He was a principal officer. He was a good guy, I liked him. Mick, I believe he went back to work at Liverpool. Bradders explained state of play, where he was at, he'd had brain damage, mentally unwell. It was a struggle to get him on the van, cuffed, away you go. He's gone to his brain unit. Obviously I'm not on the escort, when they got there, the PO come back, told us about it, the brain unit was just like a home. Um, it's not a prison. You know, they, they don't have gates, they don't have cell doors or anything like that. They took him in. The PO says to the staff, you know, where we're putting him, in there. So he's looking, it's a normal room. This is a guy who's smashed his cell up. Uh, he's kicking off. They've had trouble with him on, uh, on the prison transport, you know. Trying to fight staff, not necessarily hurt him, just struggling. He's unwell. He's mentally unwell and he already had the brain damage. So they put him in a room, took the cuffs off. He's already kicking off. Um, the staff at the unit said, you know, fine, we'll deal with him. The prison staff left. Before they got out the door, he's kicked off, yeah? These brain units are, you know, the the like hospital units. They don't have like prison officers, they don't have security, they don't have people there who are trained to restrain people. Yeah, he, he was he was going to be troublesome for them. He said the bell went off. You know, the prison staff were going to help these staff. And the staff said, no, you know, we'll deal with him. You just go, you've done your bit. Very sad. Now, the other part of it. Because he was unwell. He had his visits downstairs on healthcare. Upstairs where I worked, the inpatient unit, 22 bed unit downstairs the outpatient unit so his mum would be brought up there young lass and he would have his visits down there i'd take him down he'd have a visit in a room a bit of privacy with his mum i'd take him back upstairs someone had escort her back out the building his mum were distraught by the end you know no conversation out of him really, very agitated, you know, his mum would be in tears, physically upset and why wouldn't you be? Uh, all things tragic like I say, that's a life ruin that, young lad, all his life in front of him, working, young lass, young child, bam, gone, just like that, gets a beating from gang members through mistaken identity. A lot of young offenders on B1 um, went on to be quite, shall we say, infamous. One recently, Stephen McMullen, I got on with that lad, he's another one, went from sort of minor crimes to armed robberies. Stevie took it one step further, he actually escaped from prison transport, him and another lad, yeah. Prison transports pulled over, they got off, got recaptured, got slammed. He was already in for armed robbery. I think he got 25 years. I'm quite sure he's recently appealed that and got a reduction in sentence. That's Stephen McMullen. I will come back to revisit some of them lads and their stories. Hope you've enjoyed this, guys. Um, questions in the comments. Lee is taking them all down. Question and answer. A couple of times a month if we get enough questions one a week if you like it tell us tell us if you like the format 
yeah much appreciated guys thanks to all the new subscribers may well hit 10,000 today I'm chuffed a bit so I really am um, lots of comments about where we're going this is going to be my studio guys the van in the summer free movement you know I'll be taking people country parks a couple of deck chairs outside the van camera in the van interviews like that you know um, maybe the odd one in someone's house or maybe in my own house I don't know I'm going to keep it real unedited conversations got lots and lots of people to interview in the next 12 months um, some really interesting stuff so thanks everyone thanks for all the kind comments thanks for your continued support and parting shot as always yeah. <laughs> cheers guys appreciate it Thanks for coming. How do guys? Just at home now. As is often the case, um, you know, things just come into my mind and pop in. I'm gonna tell you a few stories about B1, some of the lads I met on there. So first one, a young lad called Begley. He was 18 at the time. Uh, he got a life sentence, so whole of life, Bridger Cregan means they're never getting out life sentence you get a tariff um, and a license so the shortest life sentence I've ever seen was this young lad he got 18 months for murder so let me explain he was 18 drunk there was another lad involved obviously who he killed he was 18 he was drunk the other lad asked him for a cigarette he told him to do one they both had knives, never been in trouble before. They stabbed each other. Young Begley nearly died, the other lad did die. So he got 18 months for that, for murder. Yeah? Um, judge took the circumstances into account, took everything into account, 18 months. So that's Young Begley. He was possibly. Um, you know, quite a clean living young lad, other than carrying a knife. Maybe never been back inside, I don't know. That might have been his Scarborough warning. Young Bailey, the lad I met at Strange Ways. He was, uh, he was a big lad as a young offender. Got on with him, liked him. There was some gang involvement there, you know, but a lot, a lot of them, I, I connected, you know, like a big kid myself. I connected with them young offenders. I got on with him. I remember... <laughs> Funny, I remember um, Christmas time it was coming up to, he was on basic regime, which means he's on punishment. He's got uh, he's got no TV or anything like that, borrowed a radio off somebody else, which you're not supposed to, but I'll let him. Very near, bang up, so maybe quarter to eight, yeah. He's locked up because he's on basic regime, pressed his cell bell. So as I wander down to his cell, as I look in, Turns the bell off. What's up, lad? Mr. Samworth, um, you're going to place me on report. Oh, what's up? I can't tell you. If you can't tell me, I'm going away. Mr. Samworth, you'll laugh. I won't, I promise. Mr. Samworth, don't place me on report. Listen, Bailey, you know, just spill the beans. He says, will you come in with yourself? There's an offer you can't refuse. Open the door, as soon as I opened the door, shot the bolt, I knew what the crack where you could stink it. It'd been brewing hooch. Prison alcohol. Sugar. Sugar. Bread. Uh, fruit water. <laughs> Sorry for laughing at myself, guys. I can still see his face. Now, if he ever sees this, he will laugh as well. He got a bit of an afro going on. He was a tall lad. Uh, taller than me and the bottle of hooch had exploded see what you have to do when you're brewing hooch guys fermenting gas so you keep letting it out the bottle in order for it to ferment he hadn't done it it exploded and the, the smell for me it's a horrible smell it had oranges it was orange based the fruit he sell stank it was disgusting 
There's a little bit of orange everywhere. Um, his afro. <laughs> his afro, his eyebrow, it was everywhere. It had exploded. You couldn't have made a bigger mess. Anyway, he asked me when he could clean his cell because it stank. And, you know, being on base, it was not supposed to be out. I says, right, I'll get you some stuff. I'll bring it to your cell. <laughs> Lock you in. Yeah, and you can clean yourself, which he did, you know, and I didn't place him on report. Uh, it was a bad screw, brewing hooch. I didn't place him on report. He did have some more in the cell. I made him pour it down the toilet, okay, so he didn't get to drink it. That's Bailey, Begley. McKinney. I was thinking about this lad the other day. I had a teardrop here. Um, he hadn't killed anyone, you know. Teardrop rose quite often in prison. In America, especially, you know, killed someone, something like, something like that. Anyway, McKinney was, um, he was the one breaking the rule as a young offender. Young offenders into the weed big time. Um, another story's come now. This is what happens, guys, I'm sorry. So McKinney, when he came into the wing the first time I met him, met, meet him or the first... Uh, uh, Get one of them, Lee. The first time I met him, we had to lock him behind his door. Um, he was into his heroin. Smack, crack, whatever you want to call it. Some of the other lads knew him. Young offenders, 18 to 21, uh, were totally anti-drugs other than weed. Yeah, uh, They called out the smackheads, uh, addicts, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, they used to call them out. This lad, the only one I ever met, Forest Bank, 18 months. Lots of lads in and out who was taking heroin and we had to keep him banged up most of the time because he did take heroin. I would later see him as well uh, at Strange Ways. So that was McKinney. It's just, just the drugs things that, just, you know, that age gap, they weren't into it. Sadly, again, some of them lads later in life would be on H&I wing, detox wing, on methadone at Strange Ways. But at that time, on the whole, just weed okay who was the other guy I was going to talk about Daniels Daniels big lad um, these lads outside right pretty much I never knew why they were in prison what they were up to or anything else all I can tell you is I knew him at Forest Bank I got a relationship I knew what I was like again you know uh, I'd have a laugh with them Get on with them. I weren't an on top screw officer guard, whatever you want to call me. I weren't on top. Yeah, used to have a laugh, and you know, I, I don't know whether they respected me, liked me, or whatever. But that carried on later at Strange Ways. So Daniel's another big lad. I remember him mostly at Strange Ways. I do remember him at Forest Bank. He is a lad. Um, he had three brothers shot and killed, separate times because of their involvement in whatever, I don't know. Uh, numerous attempts on his own life. Um, at one point, I know his mum got shot uh, because of who he was. So, you know, it's a dangerous world some of these lads are mixing. But Daniels comes to mind because just before I left, strange ways. So it's in 2.15, I walked up onto visits um, I was working on A-Wing at that time. This is how it changed, guys. The prison system for me. The visits hall at Strange Ways. Plenty of people have been through it. Uh, prisoners and loved ones. Plenty of staff worked up there. It was a big visits hall. Really big area. Um, it's When I first went, it was well monitored. A lot of staff have worked there for a long time. Overhead cameras. Uh, you had lids on your cups. So nothing could be put in your cup and passed over you could embrace you know hug your loved one when they came on the visit embrace them when they left nothing on the tables there was a little berlin wall the ai in between yeah you had to keep your hands one side your visitors the other kids and that occasionally they'd be put on the table you know put little kids on the table visit staff you know take them off but the visit staff were really good um you used to get called out that group of uh, prison staff for being lazy or whatever it weren't a job for me i didn't mind doing it on overtime um long term and i got bored you know in the room 
might be in the room, the visits room, four hours with a mic, listening to a cameraman, keeping your eyes open, total boredom. However, you know, they did a really good job. This is 215. Yeah, so the visits group as such has gone. So it was made up of staff from the wings now and a few visits staff. Um, walks on to visits, very few visits, uh, one row. There was what? Maybe four rows of tables. You know, it could hold the visits hall when it were full with prisoners and their loved ones. Maybe, I don't know, 150, 200 people. It was a big place. Anyway, it's just one row of visitors. Uh, maybe eight lads at tables with the loved ones. Daniels, boom, saw him straight away. Uh, what are you doing up here, Sam? We're straight away, nervous. See his knees going up and down, leg wobble. Hi, hi, what's he been up to straight away? It was obvious, you know, he looked nervous. Officer approached me, there were five officers upstairs. I've talked about this before, having bottle in a job. You don't need bottle to be a prison officer. When it becomes a challenging place to work, like the whole of the prison service, when they became short staffed. Um, if there's no one working in an area with no bottle, then people didn't get challenged. These five staff, uh, a couple of decent officers amongst them, some of them were, you know, uh, not so good, shall we say, let's keep it pleasant. But there's five of them, yeah? This guy approaches me, I liked him. Didn't have no bottle, but he got a big heart. And I would have him on my team in my prison. Only one of him though. No more. He says he's he's plugged. I said, sorry. He says he, he's plugged. That lad. He says, Daniel. He says, yeah. I says, why aren't you pressing the alarm bell? Um, we didn't want to cause any bother. This is visits in strange ways. Right, let me tell you what have happened. Yeah. Somebody receives on a visit... Yeah, there's not even many people there, so the cameras should have been on them people. Somebody receives, you hit an alarm bell, you try. Um, bear in mind that sometimes the hall might be full. You would try and stop that person plugging, which is receiving an item and putting it up the backside. You know, they might well put it in the underwear first. Um, if staff were on the way over, they would try and get it up inside. Once it's inside game over you know you're you're not getting that back they might end up in the segregation unit but you're not getting it back the other thing is if you do get it and on camera is a visitor who's passed that parcel drugs or phone the visitor is then looking at prison so that's serious shit so i said when you do this 15 minutes ago so there's five staff he's received a parcel daniels it'll be well up now yeah well out of sight done nothing so what did i do nothing at that point 15 minutes i've seen nothing yeah if the troops had arrived they would have gained nothing yeah because whatever he received is well up his jacksey so it goes downstairs um oh that's it i've been sent over just to help at the end of the shift I went downstairs this young lass downstairs on her own new to the job so there's five guys upstairs young lass downstairs what happened as people come off visits um they would come downstairs searched in a holding cell then taken back to the wing a percentage of those will be strip search but she's on her own yeah um she looked terrified anyway i goes downstairs with her waiting for the visitors to come off we would have searched them together put me in a holding cell back to the wing daniels comes down knock on the door yeah so they'd let him down so no one's escorted him down, he's plugged something. No one's escorted him down, he's come down on his own. So there's me and this lass. So he knew what crack were with me, come in. I said strip search, he knew he was going to be strip searched. Here's the thing, I said to this young lady, you obviously don't want to come in here. And she went, no I don't. So I went in to strip search him on my own. <coughs> Put yourself in a position there guys. Yeah, he could say I'd assaulted him. Grabbed his manhood, could say anything. Yeah. We've got dynamic security. I know the lad. I know him really well. He knows the score. If he hadn't plugged whatever he'd received right up on the visit, coming down the stairs, 
it will now be gone it will be tickling his tonsils so he came in this room yeah dynamic security i know him what's up worth he used to call me worth no problem with that everything off yeah didn't ask his face in a wall everything off took all his clothes off i didn't have to say anything bent over part of his cheeks could see right up his ricker yeah all right mate get dressed shut door yeah um he came out i took him back to the wing hold on a minute prison officer here yeah somebody's received on a visit and you've taken him back to the wing of course i have yeah he's not going to seg there's been no alarm bell no nothing yeah security po principal officer comes down 15 minutes after i take him back to the wing mr samworth you're all right i got on with him got a lad who's plugged yeah where is he back on the wing you've taken him back yeah why no alarm bell no paperwork staff didn't challenge him i couldn't see anything full strip search he went fair enough and he's gone he was same as me nothing you can do yeah so there you go and that was daniels all right guys um hi come on in so there you go guys few stories uh loads more lads there hope you've enjoyed that hope it explains the uh the print service oh let's finish with a little bit bailey at strange ways uh some of these lads um it weren't intention but embarrassment's the wrong word they weren't embarrassed dynamic security staff prisoner relationships guys which is now gone Bailey was on C Wing. I had seen him down there. He was even bigger than he was as a YP. He was 6'2, six 6'3, six maybe 18 stone. Powerful lad. He had a massive afro at this point. Um, no little bits of orange in it, though. So the last time I saw him at Strange Ways, again, 2.15. Um, I've been asked to go from A Wing, where I worked, induction wings. So this is my last three weeks, to C Wing, the moving one to the SEG. Yeah, and they expected him to kick off. I didn't know it was Bailey. I went on the wing. Uh, I don't know, maybe eight, ten staff outside a cell. So someone's talking to someone through the hatch. Yeah, door opens, uh, and it's Bailey stood in the doorway. He filled the doorway uh, with his big afro. Uh, totally blanked everyone. Yeah, he was told to come out of the cell. He will be placed in cuffs and taken to the seg. He come out of the cell, yeah, <laughs> brass as you like, walked past a couple of officers, held his hand out. You're right, Mr. Samworth. You know, naturally, I held my hand out, shook his hand. All the staff are looking at me like, what the fucking hell? Are you going? All right, are you off to seg? Yeah. Are you going to fight? He goes, nah, Mr. Samworth, I'll talk to you, won't we? And that's what he did. He was cuffed. Um... You know, you could feel eyes burning into the back of my head. But there you go, that's dynamic security, yeah? If they'd have asked me on the wing, or well, I'd have been on the wing, and they said, look, we need to take him, it'd have been one of them, look, lad, you've got... Boom, it's done, yeah? Staff prisoner relationships, they don't exist anymore. Anyway, sorry if I've waffled on. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, cheers and thanks for coming, guys. Sorry about the lighting, Lee. Obviously, it's going dark, but there you go. Deal with it. That's what you get paid for. Cheers, guys. <laughs>